Hello everyone, this is Atisha, Developer Advocate at Arcana and today in this video we are going to build a basic Web3 frontend application using HTML, CSS and JavaScript in which we will learn how we can integrate with Arcana Auth SDK and interact with Arcana Wallet which uses Ethereum JSON RPC to interact with the blockchain. So if you are not aware of Arcana Auth SDK, it enables social and passwordless authentication and comes in with an embedded Web3 wallet which is used to sign the blockchain transactions. So without any further delay, let's get started. So let's head to our docs to see what all steps we need to follow in order to integrate with Arcana's Auth SDK. So let's hit on docs here. So if we go to how to guides, within that we go to integrate SDK and the Auth section. Here, the very first step that we need to follow is to register and configure our DAP to Arcana's developer dashboard. So let's go to the dashboard by clicking on this link. So the dashboard in itself is also integrated with Arcana's Auth SDK. That's why we are getting the options of passwordless authentication and also multiple social authentication mechanisms. So let's log into this particular dashboard via Google. Choose the account via which we want to log in. Okay, so we are logged in successfully. Here we need to create a new app and provide some details by which we would be able to log in the users via multiple social and passwordless authentication mechanism and we'll also get the embedded wallet. So let's click on create new app, enter the app name. Let's write it Arcana Auth example. You can also choose the region where you want to store the data. We'll select Asia for now and click on create. Okay, so we have registered our DAP on Arcana's developer dashboard. So now let's configure the settings. So let's go to the auth section and here within the social auth section, we can have multiple social authentication in our DAP like Google, Twitch, Discord, GitHub and Twitter. And for that we would require uh, to input the keys that are associated. For example, if you want the Google authentication mechanism, we need to provide the client ID. So if you're not aware from where you can get these keys, you can simply go to the documentation of Arcana. Authenticate section, it mentions all the steps that uh, you need to follow to get multiple authentication mechanisms keys. For example, for this particular application, since we'll just be having Google authentication, we simply need to follow these basic steps. So I've already gotten my client ID from the Google developer console, which I'm going to put here. And if you want, any other social authentication also available in your DAP, you can respectively uh, fill the keys detail in here and then hit on save. So after saving this, what it's going to do is it's going to assign an app address, which we'll be using later in our application. So if we go to the dashboard here, you can see that there is an app address that is assigned, which we'll be using later. Now let's have a look how the front end of our application is going to look like. So this is how the front end of our application would look like. It will basically have multiple buttons in here by which we will not just log in, but we'll also be able to see how, say if we add the chain, how it will get reflected on our Arcana wallet widget that would be visible here after logging in. We'll also get the status like what is the current account, what type of request is it and what's the result it is showing. For example, if you click on get account, it should give you the result, meaning your account by which you have logged in. So you can find this project within the examples folder or uh, in the auth repo of Arcana. I will give the link of it in the description down below. So this is the repo and this is the examples folder. So now let's uh, clone this repository. Copy this, head on to our terminal and I'm going to clone it in my documents folder. And I will just write git clone. Let's go to the respective folder and check out the dev branch and do an npm install. Let's also do npm run build. Okay, this is done. Now let's head on to our Visual Studio code and see this particular project. So as you can see in the project folder, we have an examples folder and it contains majorly three files. One is index.html. The other is index.js and the third is style.css. So let's remove the code that is there in index.html file and index.js file so that we'll start writing the code from scratch in order to make it more understandable. So for index.html, let's start uh, writing the boilerplate information that is required. Within the head, we'll import our CSS file and we'll also give it a title. Within body, we'll create multiple buttons. 
Here you can see we have created multiple buttons for connecting the wallet, triggering the Google login, login with link, adding chain, switching chain and many other. Also one more thing if you see here, we also need to provide the status like the current account request and results. Let's write the code for that as well. So below it, we'll write this code. Here you can see that we have assigned my, uh, unique IDs to these values, one for account, one for request and one for result. The next thing that we need to do is we need to install the auth SDK. So for installing, uh, the guidelines are given in the documentation. If you go to the documentation within the developer documentation auth SDK and auth SDK usage guide. So if you are working with NPM, you can install via this. If you are working with CDN, you can install via these methods. Now, since we are already in our auth folder and when we did NPM run build, it created a dist folder. We can directly get the auth SDK from there. So let's write this. Now, the next thing is. In order to make this buttons functional, we also need to connect our index.js file to our index.html file. So in order to do that, let's write the index.js file here. And yeah, done. So our index.html file is done. Now let's head on to our index.js file. So from the guide, you can see that we first need to import our auth provider. So for importing that, we simply write this. The next is to initialize the auth provider. So for initializing the auth provider, we will create a new variable called auth and provide the app address in here. So for getting the app address, let's go to our dashboard and copy the app address from here and paste it over here. So here we also need to specify the chain ID. So the chain ID would be the one by which your wallet will get connected to initially when you connect the wallet. So now we want uh, for our application, we want to connect to Arcana testnet. So we'll provide the chain ID of Arcana testnet, which is 0x9dd4. And yes, it is done. Let's also create a new variable called provider. Now we also need to ensure that whenever we click on any button, uh, the value of the current account request and result get populated. So in order to do that, we'll write multiple functions which will help us populate these values. So uh, let's first access the element which have these element IDs, account request and result by get element uh, by ID method. Okay. Now it's right to write the functions. We'll call them set request, set result, and set account. Okay. Now before invoking any JSON RPC calls, we need to first initialize the wallet. So in order to do that, we will write this window on load and make it an asynchronous function. And within it, we just need to write the code which initializes our auth. So First, it's going to initialize the auth and assign auth.provider to the provider and check if uh, it's connected or not by invoking the API is logged in. And if it's logged in, it will going to console to the log that it's connected. And we also need to write this set hooks function, which will manage the chain or account change in the Arcana wallet. So the code for that, we can get it from here. Okay, after this, what we are going to do is we are going to write our connect wallet function. So let's write this function and call it connect. So we have set the request here as the connect wallet and what is going to do is it's going to connect the wallet and then on the log it is going to uh, show us the provider information. Now for authenticating the users via Google login we can simply write another function and call it social login. You need to ensure that the function name that you are writing here should match with the names that you have given in here. So we'll call it social login. And here we need to call the API called login with social. Since we are just logging in via Google, so we have mentioned Google here specifically. If you want other social authentication mechanisms as well, you can pass in a parameter here uh, about the type and just pass the type in here by specifying it in your index.html file. Similarly, we can write the function to log in the users via passwordless authentication. For that, we'll have to call the API login with link and we can also log out the users. Uh, for that, we'll have to call the API logout. So let's write the logout function and call it logout. 
we'll also have a button which will add a chain to our wallet so in order to write that we'll simply write add chain function So what we are doing here is we are using the method that is specified by EIP 3085 and the method is wallet underscore add Ethereum chain. And here we need to pass in certain parameters like the chain ID, the chain name and RPC URL and some other information as well, which will get reflected in our wallet, which we are going to see later. And also we can similarly write the function to switch the chain. Say we want to switch the chain from whichever chain we are on to Ethereum. So here we are going to again use a method that is specified by EIP3326 and it's called wallet underscore switch Ethereum chain. So this is the method and major parameter that we need to uh, pass in here is the chain ID, which is the this chain ID is of Ethereum chain. Similarly, we can write other functions as well. For example, for signing the transaction, checking the wallet balance and sending the tokens, the code of which is available in the documentation, you can see from there. So what we are going to do now is we'll simply write other functions as well in here. Okay, it is done. Now it's time to see how this app is functioning. So we'll click on this go live button. Let's go to the examples folder. Let's first try the connect wallet option. So if we click on the connect wallet here, uh, you can see that we have the passwordless authentication which comes in with the wallet. And also since we only put in the details for the Google authentication in the dashboard, it's only showing Google. If you add in other authentication details as well on the dashboard, it will show you other options as well. If we go to trigger log Google login, what it is going to do, it's going to take you to the Google authentication by which you can log into your app. So let's log in via this account. Okay, we are logged in. As you can see here, the request was social login. The current account and result is not yet populated. Now, uh, here we also got the widget which shows in the Arcana testnet as the uh, network because if you remember when we were uh, initializing our auth, we had chosen this particular network. Now let's close this. We'll not do the operations from here and we'll try a few things from here. Let's try to add in a chain. If you remember uh, when we were writing the code in the chain option, we gave the option of adding the Ethereum chain. So in the drop down, there is Ethereum mainnet, Ethereum girly and many other. So let's see what happens when we try to add the chain. So it will ask for the approval. We'll approve it. And once it is approved, if we see the drop down here, you can see that we have Ethereum as well mentioned here. Now we can also try to switch chains. As you can see here, we are still on the Arcana testnet. And if we click on the switch chain, what it should do is it should switch the chain from Arcana testnet to Ethereum. So let's click there, approve it. And you can see now we are on Ethereum. Similarly, we can get the accounts. Uh, so if we click on account, the request would be ETH accounts and it has fetched our current account. Uh, you can see from the profile tab that the wallet address is mentioned. Also, we can do multiple things like request decryption, do encryption, request signature, and also there is a logout button. So you can also try these things out. So you can see how easy it is to integrate Arcana Auth SDK to your dApp and how amazing the wallet is. So what are you waiting for? Start building your dApps by integrating with Arcana's Auth SDK. And also if you have any queries, don't forget to drop them in Arcana's Discord server, the link of which is again given in the description box down below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.